All right. Welcome back, everyone, to Plant-Based Kidney Health. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. My partner is Michelle Krosmer. So, Michelle, we got a really interesting topic today, which I still can't believe there's so much interest in. But essentially, what I'm hearing about is this carnivore diet. So today's topic, guys, is all about carnivore diet and what is the link with that and kidney disease. So, Michelle, can you explain for us what the heck is this carnivore diet? What does it include? And more importantly, what does it not include? Yeah. So, I mean, just as the name sounds, it's almost exclusively animal products. So you have meat, you have organ meat, you have fish, eggs, um, oftentimes dairy is included in that. And then generally it excludes all plant foods. So fruits, veggies, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. There are some variations of the carnivore diet that I've seen where people will do, you know, 90% of it is just the meat or the animal products. And then they include some fruit in their diet. But again, most of those plant foods are completely out of the diet and people relying on their, um, you know, 90 to hundred percent of their calories coming from those meats and organ meats and eggs, fish, and dairy. So now that we know what it is, Dr. Hashimi, I mean, what do we know about it? Is there any potential benefits for people with kidney disease and the carnivore diet? And then what about any potential risks or concerns? Okay, so let's do this. Let's start with the potential risks first. So the first thing you got to know is there are actually no studies I could find. And I looked at all the main databases I use, specifically on the carnivore diet and CKD. Now we have other data on animal-based diets and CKD, so we can extrapolate what that would mean. But the the data that we have presented over the last several, several videos, and there's so many research studies we've talked about in the past that shows protein restriction can slow down CKD progression. There's even a really well-designed study where we showed a very low protein diet could play an instrumental role in slowing down CKD progression. So that's number one. Number two is is that if you eat a lot of animal-based protein, you introduce a lot of acid. So what we call PRAL or potential renal acid load actually ends up damaging the kidney. It drives the machinery harder. So lowering the potential renal acid load is actually shown to be uh, preventative in preserving what's left of your kidneys. Now, how do we know? For example, when we have people who start to develop acid in the body, we know that when we measure their bicarb, if their bicarb, which is the measure of base, if their bicarb is low and we give them sodium bicarbonate as therapy, we reduce their mortality. So, The more acid they have in their blood, the higher their mortality. The less acid they have, the longer they're able to live. And there's a sweet spot. So you can't just give them bicarbonate till they're blue in the face, but it matters. The other part of this is when we talk about phosphorus, carnivore diet tends to be very high in phosphorus. And we've shown the data that there's a substantial link between elevations in phosphorus, even as little as one point and higher mortality. Now, if we flip this whole table around and we say, well, what are the potential benefits? The potential benefits is any diet that focuses on minimizing processed foods, that focuses on minimizing refined sugars, all of that stuff can lead to weight loss. It can lead to improved blood pressures. So all of those things can be seen as helpful. This is why when people follow a ketogenic diet, they will see results. They'll lose weight. Their blood pressures will get better. Even the amount of protein they're spilling will go down, not because they cut down their protein, it's because they cut down all the other risk factors. They lost weight. They got rid of a lot of that extra stuff they were carrying. So the benefit of any diet out there is that if it gets you away from junk foods, that's better. But when it comes to kidney disease, the data still is very, very clear. More acid means more trouble in the future. So with that, Michelle, when we talk about carnivore diet, From a nutrition perspective, does it meet the nutrient needs of folks who have chronic kidney disease? No, I mean, it doesn't and it wouldn't. And one thing that, you know, of course, like you mentioned, there's no research on this and specifically in kidney disease. But the other thing is if you look at a lot of the people that are promoting um, just carnivore diet in general, and you look at the information that they're providing and the benefits that they're saying, and again, this is outside of just, you're just even Googling carnivore diet. Most of them have disclaimers saying like, if you have kidney disease or on a protein restricted diet, you need to speak with your healthcare provider or medical professional before you do this. So 
there's obviously, there's already disclaimers for that. But as far as does it meet your nutrient needs, I think the two biggest concerns on both sides of like too high and too low is that you're going to have too high of protein um, and you're going to have too low of fiber intake. And both of those things outside of what you've said with um, being more acid producing and, and stuff is that the other thing is we want fiber in the diet to help improve gut health and the gut microbiome to and lower protein to help lower and reduce uremic toxins and help to slow delay or halt the progression of kidney disease. And so they're just really, um, you know, even if it's carnivore with a little fruit, it's, it's not something that people with kidney disease should be doing. And it's um, something that likely could exacerbate it as well. So there you guys have it, carnivore diet and kidney disease. Thanks, guys.